So the year is 2013, and you, my sir, are a baller. You only want the peak of performance when it comes to computer systems. But there's a problem. You know nothing about computers. So do you go down to your local Best Buy and you say, Good sir, I have a thousand dollar dues here and I want the best PC that money can buy. He would probably sell you this, an HP Envy Phoenix. It has an i7-4770K in it. It's a good start. It has 128 gigabyte SSD in it. Hey, 2013, that's a pretty good thing to find. It has a hard drive, has some cool SD card readers. It's liquid cooled, how cool is that? But it has a GT640 in it for a graphics card. We're gonna solve that today, so let's get to it. So you heard me right, this here machine right here would set you back around a thousand dollars back in 2013, 2014 when this thing was relevant. Whether or not that's a good deal, in my honest opinion, not really. Even at that time, around 2013, the 700 series for NVIDIA was coming out and relevant, so you could easily say that the 600 series was easily available to anyone building or putting out pre-built systems. So why we have a 640 in here and not a 660 or a 670 kind of blows my mind because with a 4770K, one of the more higher-end Intel chips from that time, you really could push a bigger graphics card in there. And looking at the prices for graphics cards around that time, especially if you're buying like OEM HP graphics cards, you could easily put a much more powerful 600 series GPU in there. So a thousand dollar dues, that's quite a fair bit to spend on such a immaculate piece of machinery. How much did Two Wheels Use Tech, the, the computer flipping extraordinaire, spend on this aging yet still elegant box with lights in it? I spent a mere fifty dollars on this beautiful hunk of junk. Looking around on eBay and the like, these things nowadays go for anywhere between three, four, five hundred dollars. That might sound a bit unreasonable, but I assure you that I showed up, I bought it, completely expecting it to not work or turn on when I brought it home. But with the two wheels use tech magic that I just apparently have an abundance of, I brought it home, I plugged it in, and it worked right off. It even had a bigger SSD in it than it did when it was sold originally in 2013. So, the magic just keeps drip-dropping out of this faucet, yo. So, to show what this PC should have been capable of doing back in 2013, we're going to be putting a GTX 660 in there, which, believe it or not, is a pretty big boost from the 640 to the 660. And then we're going to be putting in a GTX 1080 Ti in there to see just how far we can push that 4770K. We'll potentially overclock it down the road, but we'll we'll see when we get there. So the first step is to see where we start. We're going to be starting by benchmarking the GT640, as miserable as that potentially might be. Then we will go on to the GTX 660, and then we will go on to the GTX 1080 Ti. So without further ado, let's get to benchmarking. So quick change of plans. Put the 660 in there, and apparently while sitting on my shelf, the 660 may have died. It may just not like this computer. Either way, we're just going to go from the 640 to the 1080 Ti. It'll be more of showing what potential the CPU had versus what could have gone in here at the time. So it's a little annoying that the 660 isn't working right now, but at least you'll get some idea of how much performance they left on the table with putting that 640 in there. So I'm going to get to benchmarking this beast. So the first test we're going to be running is the Superposition Benchmark. This benchmark is much more GPU bound than CPU bound, so really it's only going to serve to show the huge disparity between the GT640 and the GTX 1080 Ti. This isn't exactly the best case scenario for showing what card would have been in here at the time, but it is going to show just how low on the totem pole the GT640 is as far as graphics power is concerned. So a running theme that you'll see with all the benchmarks today is even giving the best chance to hit that 30 FPS mark, this GT640 is just awful. It really truly shows how bad of a pairing it was to put with the 4770K. 
So getting into 3D Mark Times by, again, this is a more GPU intensive benchmark than a CPU one, so it's not the best balanced load to show, but it is an absolute bloodbath for the GTX 1080 Ti. It has no problems trouncing this poor, pathetic excuse for a graphics card. At this point, I'm even questioning if the Intel integrated graphics would be better than the GT640 that they put in this poor machine. So getting into our first actual gaming benchmark, which is GTA 5, mind you, this game was actually new when this pre-built was relevant, you'll see that the GTX 1080 Ti is finally not allowed to do 100% usage all the time. The CPU is actually finally holding it back, and it's showing the reverse that we had in the pre-built in the first place. The GPU is now being limited by the CPU, versus with the GT640, that GPU is limiting the CPU to such a degree that you can't even get an okay gaming experience out of it. So a card somewhere between these two, the extreme bottom and the extreme high end, would be a perfect pairing. But why a pre-built company such as HP would do something like this blows my mind. So if it wasn't clear that I had beaten this pre-built to death yet, let's go ahead and go into GTA 5 with 720p low settings. Again, this game was new when this pre-built was being pushed and sold in stores, so it's almost an insult to see that a $1,000 PC that was marketed towards gaming cannot play the relevant title of its time at 720p low with 30 FPS. That is worse than the consoles when they were released, and that actually kind of infuriates me because this is just a piss poor excuse for a gaming experience. So the results basically speak for themselves. It, it wasn't exactly a competition, but it really did show that there was just so much CPU performance left on the table with this machine, and it's just one of those things that pre-builds do all the time that just irk me to oblivion. Putting either a nice graphics card or a nice CPU in there that doesn't mesh well with the other, why you wouldn't try and pair those out to give the customer a better experience blows my mind. I mean, you could make the argument that it has a much better upgrade path, but no one's spending $1,000 on a pre-built and then putting another three, $400 into a graphics card down the line, they're just gonna sell it to somebody and buy a new one because they probably don't know what they're doing, hence buying a pre-built. But with that little confirmation done showing just how annoying pre-builds can be and how crappily you can spend your money on said pre-builds, that basically wraps up this video. It was just a little bit of a, a dive into this computer itself and the kind of odd, setup it had inside of it and kind of an overall theme of don't buy pre-built kids because you're much better off taking your parents credit cards and snipping it in two right before their very eyes instead of purchasing this that might kill your dreams so that basically wraps up the video bringing this phoenix back from the ashes i'm sure their marketing department would be rather proud of me bringing that name back into relevance after all these years but that will do it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you learned something new, hit that like button. If I rambled too much and my audio quality sucks, hit that dislike button. If you want to stick around and see more of my little shenanigans and PC flipping adventure, hit that subscribe button and I will do my best to keep you around. Without further ado, have a good day, guys.